Right, so today I want to talk about another really cool feature that's been added recently, and it's reached stage four for ECMAScript, which means it's officially ready for browsers to start adopting it. And in the past uh, month or so, uh, the nightly builds and the beta versions of all the browsers have started to adopt this thing. And this is optional chaining. So it's a way that we can use this operator right here. I'll zoom in a little bit. There we go. This one right here, the question mark followed by the period. This is the optional chaining operator. So it allows us to test for existence of things while we're writing our code. So one line of code where we're drilling down into an object, trying to use properties or methods that are inside of it. And if they exist, then the chain continues. If it fails at any point, then it's going to jump back and just return undefined. So got a pretty simple little example of what we're going to do here. So I'm using Chrome version 80 right here. I'm in uh, Chrome Canary and I've got a new up-to-date version. Support across the browsers right now. So down here near the bottom of this line, this is the optional chaining, the second last line here. And talks about the fact that Babel 7 supports it, so you can do transpiling with Babel. Uh, it's not in any of the versions of IE, but Edge, which is now based on uh, Chrome, or the Chromium browser engine, Edge 80 has this. Um, Chrome 80, 81, 82, these are the nightly builds. Those ones are supported. Opera 67 and on. Firefox, none of the production versions of Firefox, but the beta and the nightly versions, those ones both have it. So I'm going to show you this page running in all three browsers, in Opera, Firefox, and Chrome, just to show you that it's working in those three in the nightly builds. Okay, so what is optional chaining? Well, to understand this a little bit better, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at uh, ternary operator and see how that works, because the syntax is very similar to that. We've got three divs here, each one with an ID, underscore, one, two, and three. And I want to be able to click anywhere on the body, and then I'm going to add a random color to the background of each of these three things. And I'm also going to inside of here. So when I click on the body, I'm calling this handle click function. I'm going to generate a random number between one and seven. I'm going to do this range because I've only got three paragraphs. So there's going to be paragraphs or numbers that don't exist as IDs. My ID is going to be an underscore followed by that number. So underscore three, four, five, six, seven, any number from one to seven. I'm going to get a random eight digit hex value. So red, green, blue, and alpha. That's going to be my background color. So I'll console log those out so we can see that we are getting the different IDs and that the hex values are going to be random. My div, this is the one that I'm trying to target, is going to be with this ID. Now, if we come up here, we can see that one, two, and three, those exist, but four, five, six, seven, those do not exist yet. So here's the ternary operator. We're checking to see if div exists. Basically, if this thing is not undefined, then we're going to set its background color to hex. Otherwise, we won't do anything. Now, I can put null or I can put void zero here. Either one's going to do the same thing. It's just we have to put something in the ternary operator. So as I click along here, see the random numbers I've got are all greater than three, so nothing's happening. But if I get a number, one, two, or three, there we go. There's one, there's a two, there's a three. Every time I get a one, two, or three, it is changing the background color. Okay, fair enough. That's the ternary operator. And it's this sort of syntax that we want to get used to for the optional chaining. I'm going to call my method here, my add paragraph method, and I'm going to pass the number and I'm going to pass the hex value up to that function. It's so right up here. I've got the text that I want to add set to default, and this is always going to work right now. I'm going to create a paragraph, set its background color, give it an ID, set the text as default, and then append it. So really, all I'm doing is I'm going to create these um, divs for the values 4, 5, 6, and 7. So those have been created now. And it will just continue to cycle through all of those. But I've got this default text for all of them. So here's where optional chaining comes in. 
I'm going to change this from always saying default to doing something different. I'm going to access an array. If we open this up, I have an array. It has five elements in it. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 would be the index numbers. But there's five elements inside this array. Each element in the array is an object. They've all got this label property. So here's the optional chaining pr operator in use. I'm going to take the number that's passed in, so that number from 1 to 7, subtract 1, that'll give me the numbers 0 to 6, and I'm going to try to target something inside of this data array with the index 0 through 6. Okay, 0 through 5 are going to work, or 0 through 4 are going to work, but 5 and 6, those don't exist. I do not have an element 5 or an element 6 in this array. My optional chaining operator right here says, you know what? This thing doesn't exist. I'm not even going to try to look for the label because I don't have that value. The, the old JavaScript way of doing this would be something like this. So either with a ternary operator or an if statement, I would have to say, okay, if there's a data array and if data array has an element, this, then I want to do something with it. So I have to check for the existence of both those things. Then I can say text is going to be equal to data array num minus one dot label. So I can do a ternary operator, or it's probably going to be better than having nested ternary operators to use the if statement. But this is sort of the old way that we had to do this, which was a bit tedious. Now I can stop and pause at any point along the way within my chain to see, hey, is this thing really in existence? Do I have an index with this number or in an object? Do I have that property? And if I do, great, give me the label. If it doesn't exist, this statement right here, this expression is going to return undefined to text. So now I can check, all right, if it's not undefined, if it does exist, then I'll do the rest of this. So on our page here, oh, sorry, let's save that change. So now we're checking to see if it exists. Now I should get one, two, and three, and there's five, and there's four. And that's all I will get. When six and seven come up over here, the sevens and the sixes, those do not exist here. I don't have the element 5 and the element 6 in my array, so I'm not getting that. Do the same thing with an object. So here I have, comment that one out and uncomment this one. Here I've got an object, and the object has a property 4 and a property 7. Now I've got 1, 2, and 3 up in the page, but here I'm checking to see, okay, inside data object, is there something with the property name four, five, six, or seven. If it exists, get the label property. So similar to what we we're doing with the array. There we go. There's the four at the bottom here, and here's the number seven. So I've got one, two, three that existed on the page. Seven existed when this line of code ran. Yep, we've got the seven, so it created the seven, and then the four existed, so it created that. So we're optionally checking inside of this object to see if that property exists, and if it does, great, we're moving on. Now, I've got a couple of other properties that I added in here. So there's a, a function or a method called m. There's another property called top, just to show a little bit deeper structure, and just to show with a method we can also use these things. Here, I'm checking to see inside of data object, is there something called top? And if there's something called top, is there something called mid? If there's something called mid, is there something inside that called deep? So we're drilling down here. We're looking inside of data object to see if top exists. If it does, we're going on. If it does, we're going on. If it does, we're getting that value. So we're going all the way down here. And there we go. There's the one, two, three. It existed, so we got it. 
anytime there we go there's another four so that wasn't in the one two three originally so there's the one two three showing up again and this works if i change this to something else top level okay i don't have something called top level here so this should console log out undefined we should get an undefined back from here not an error but undefined there we go there's an undefined for four and for seven and again this is a much simpler way than if we had to write if data obj and data obj dot top and data obj dot mid and data obj dot oh, top dot mid dot deep So you'd have to check every step along the way before optional chaining. This is what we would have had to write to do what we just did here, all in one line. For the methods, you want to check and see if the method exists. Go, I'm going to comment out these ones. So the M and the F. We're looking inside of data object for a method called M and a method called F. M exists, but F does not. So we just have to put this optional chaining operator in between the M and the parentheses. This is going to run the M, but not the F. There we go. There's M running custom method, because that's what it does up here. Just console logs out custom method. There we go again, custom method, custom method. But we're not getting any errors on the F. This one didn't exist, so this line did nothing. It just returned undefined. Nothing happened, no error. And this is the power of optional chaining. So just to show, now that we've got this all running, this is it running in Chrome. And I've got the developer edition of Firefox. We can... Take a look in the console here. You can see we're getting the same thing. Refresh the page. So custom method is coming up. We've got the seven, we've got the four, five and six are just being skipped over without an error happening. And the build 68 version of Opera. There it is running as well. Okay, and that's optional chaining. Um, sample of uh, copy of this code is linked to down in the description. I've got it saved as a code gist. Uh, if you have any questions about optional chaining, feel free to leave those uh, in the comments down below. I will also leave a link to the MDN documentation for this and a link to the page that lists which environments support optional chaining as of right now. Um, and as always, thanks for watching.